All right, today is a rare type of video, but one I've been working on for quite a while. Bird's Eye View, the channel has previously been sponsored by a cybersecurity company called Guardio, but as I continue to learn and grow, it's become clear that I need to have a new and improved system of evaluation. Sponsorships are great, necessary even. They're pretty much the sole reason I can do this job full time, but as with any other topic on the channel, the truth is they deserve to be treated with skepticism and researched fully. I've done something similar once before. I did a deep dive into a company called Masterworks after a bit of controversy regarding their potential business model. But today I want to take it one step further and do an evaluation of a service that I personally use, benefit from, and respect, while also thoroughly testing the product and scrutinizing their business. Let's begin. Guardio is a cybersecurity firm operating in the United States and globally with a rapidly growing customer base. Its goal is to become a frontline defense option protecting Chrome users in particular, this is specifically for Chrome, from a constantly evolving world of online threats, and if I'm going to promote them on the channel, I need to be damn sure that they deserve to be there. After quite a bit of work, a lot of digging, some soul searching to be honest, consulting multiple industry experts and running the numbers, here's what I found. Just so that everyone is crystal clear, I will be paid if users decide to click the link down below and purchase the product. You need to know that. But anyone who's even going to consider doing that should have hard data before doing so. I'll lead with the most important singular factor in all of it. With the help of my contact, the one who's been teaching me about cybersecurity on the channel for quite a while, we set up an automated link opener system and got to work testing just how much better Guardio is when compared to a naked instance of Chrome. And this is where I decided, yes, I am going to promote the product because the results speak for themselves. I'm not going to time lapse everything down because it would probably give everyone a seizure. And for reference, we drew from this GitHub repository right here for the purpose of collecting active phishing links in the test. But when opening roughly 1000 separate links in both naked Chrome and Chrome enhanced with Guardio, there was a 17% difference. That might seem small, but it's not. Average web users in the United States, for example, browse upwards of 130 different websites per day. We are constantly clicking links to unknown pages. And with nearly 1,000 websites browsed per week for most users, the chances that you will encounter some form of phishing attack or impersonation scam is decently high. One thing that we all need to be aware of is that online phishing attacks and other malicious websites in a similar capacity often brutally target the elderly. They do this because of low tech literacy rates. They do this because the targets are more susceptible, really, meaning that they fall victim to higher loss amounts on average. And with AI advancements pushing forward every single day, the danger is honestly increasing. The sad fact is that elderly people are hyper susceptible to IRS impersonation scams, romance scams, and even crypto trading or general phishing link scams, like the ones where they send you a fake version of your bank's online login page. That's very common. And with that in mind, Guardio is an excellent option to help protect them. Beyond that, there is a sizable community using the program to help mitigate threats in crypto extensions. Me personally, I'm not a crypto enthusiast. Most people probably already know that. But for anyone who wants to engage with that industry, they should be aware that it's riddled, absolutely riddled, with bad actors who actively try to drain your wallet. Guardio, based on data we collected over the past few weeks, operates above a baseline Chrome browser for the purpose of detecting malicious extensions. One area of note in particular, Guardio is very good about flagging websites that are too new to be trusted. What I mean by that is that if someone links you to PayPal, for example, and Guardio flags the website as being created yesterday, that gives you a pretty rock solid indication that it's a scam. And beyond this, as I stated earlier, there is a 17% increased flag rate above that of Chrome itself. Put it this way. Everywhere you look, the stats are rising. More online scams, more fake links, more phishing attacks. I actually just recently covered, once again, Twitter and X and disinformation and large sophisticated bot networks. But what I didn't talk about is how there's entire groups of accounts with embedded malware in their profiles that try to get you to click the links. It's a pervasive and growing problem. Your parents, your kids, basically everyone other than you right now that can hear me watching this, because you watching this, if you're a fan of this particular channel, you probably aren't someone who necessarily needs this as much as others. You probably have a skeptical mind to begin with. I do know, know that about my audience. But the other people in your life who are hyper susceptible, well, you can have five different devices. The sign up process is extremely easy. And Guardio will provide dramatically enhanced protection beyond that of a naked Chrome browser. Actually, to be honest, the demographic audience of this channel is mostly men ages 18 to 45. And according to the Office for National Statistics in the UK, during 2021 at least, those between the ages of 25 and 44 are technically the ones most likely to receive phishing emails or messages. There are roughly 3.4 billion phishing emails sent per day, where 1.2% of all email traffic in total is estimated to be malicious. Guardio has received what's called SOC2 accreditation. This is the most comprehensive certification within systems and organization control protocols, 
basically it's an enterprise software standard that Guardio successfully adheres to. Simplified, it's basically rigorous third-party auditing with data storage, deletion, or access policies. Understanding the function of SOC2 brings us to the immutable triad, if you will, security versus convenience versus privacy. One thing is important to note here, there is no such thing as a triple threat in this industry. It doesn't exist. Services cannot be simultaneously secure, but also private and convenient. It doesn't really work like that. And you'll pretty much always be forced to make concessions on one or multiple of these points in order to benefit the others. If you don't want a company to have any of your data ever, which is an understandable impulse, I do get it. Well, if that's the case, you can't use a service like Guardio because the extension they provide does run your input URLs through a series of machine learning models to check for malicious websites. I corresponded with them quite a bit during all of this. And while I'm not allowed to know precisely which databases they use or fetch from to complete benchmarks, I was able to learn that Guardio itself is designed to be a functional information slash data black hole. In a statement they provided to me directly, quote, while external databases are used, none of your URLs or data goes to any other party other than Guardio, end quote. When it comes to the immutable triad, if you want convenience, you sacrifice privacy. If you want privacy, you often sacrifice convenience. And if you want security, you typically have to choose a spot somewhere in the middle. Guardio is closer to the convenience side of things, with less emphasis placed on privacy, though it is a specific operational policy for them to decouple IP from most of their data collection, meaning that even if a breach were to ever occur, said data cannot be linked to an individual user. But on the subject of privacy versus convenience, here's the part a prospective user needs to know. Directly from Guardio's own terms, and I do appreciate that these policies could be written in a much more deliberately complex format, but the company has opted for comprehension instead of complexity, which is worth making note of, quote, specifically during your access and or use of the services, we will collect or receive the following information, including personal information about you. Anonymized browsing behavior needed inter alia for the operation of the solution, including sites and URLs visited during the solution's operation. Country, IP address, installation time, email, name, last name, as provided by the user, four digits of credit card, credit card type for paying customers, and other information provided by you during and as part of creating and maintaining an account with us. Continuing on, to the extent you have chosen to subscribe to and use our email scanning feature and or SMS messages scanning features as part of the services, we will also receive information as follows. A, when you use our email scanning feature, the information, including email content, contained in your email inbox as of your subscription to the service and information contained in any email you receive thereafter during your use of the services. And B, when you use our SMS messages scanning feature, information contained in the SMS messages, including messages content you receive as of the subscription to such feature and thereafter during your use thereof, all as described in your subscription and as made available by us, end quote. It's long, I know, but there's more. It's important and people should know about this. Quote, continuing, information provided by you will be used in accordance with this privacy policy. You hereby agree that such information may be stored in Guardio's databases and subject to applicable law will be used also for the following purposes. 4.1.1, marketing, advertising, sales promotion, and addressing you by any available media, including in writing, by phone, electronic form, and any other form. Encouraging loyalty, research and analyzing of statistics, conducting surveys, and any other use regarding your registration and or subscription to the services or any part thereof. Internal uses including investigating complaints and or reviews, operational marketing and statistical purposes including processing information and mailings for such purpose, and lastly, providing the services and additional services to you." End quote. That's the scariest part of the entire terms of service that I could find, and all of you have a right to know about it if you are ever seriously considering a purchase of this product. Now, that being said, these are pretty standard terms in the industry. I've been using and vetting the service myself personally for over a year, actually, and I can say confidently after talking with them behind the scenes and exploring the process of onboarding, cancellation, etc., that it's well-crafted and smooth, but the point stands. Guardio is towards the secure and convenient tip of the triangle, which places it further away from the privacy end. They do make an effort to bolster that privacy aspect, a noticeable and a sizable effort. But this is an immutable trade-off in cybersecurity, and it's important for anyone advertising something, such as myself, to be honest about that. Here's the upside. Probably the most scathing critique of Guardio that I could find anywhere online was criticism about notification spam and how Guardio push notifications had caused some end users a headache after being installed. That's alarming, if true, obviously, but 
It turns out that these reports were the result of a malware program impersonator that had been masked to use Guardio's name and target users through deception. The problem has since been solved, as far as I can tell, meaning that Guardio in general actually has relatively excellent user feedback. It's obviously just one piece of the puzzle, but aggregate user review websites have some good testimony about what it is and how it worked for people. As with any open community predicated on reviewing products, use your best judgment here on a personal level, but it's certainly relevant to the discussion. I say this about the impersonation spam issue because that misconception actually circles back in a variety of online forums. When searching for information about Guardio, some users might stumble on accusations that the service is a form of notification malware, which just factually isn't true, and justify to mention here when considering the scope of what Guardio does in the broader industry. See, Guardio has been responsible for first-party research that exposed major security breaches in popular extensions and email services. For example, they recently exposed a substantial Vietnamese malware campaign responsible for in excess of 500,000 infections. I've actually organically encountered their findings myself while looking into separate topics before on this channel. That's one of the reasons I decided to do all this, because I kept running into their work just in my own hobbies and for my own research and realizing, oh, they're actually really good. They often appear on the cutting edge of cybersecurity developments with well-articulated and clearly laid out explanations for what happened, when and how, etc. And that kind of research is invaluable to companies. It proves that they have their finger on the pulse when it comes to high-level zero-day threats, and it's good to see. It's less important for an everyday user, admittedly, but it's worth mentioning. They published that research through a website subpage, really, called Labs, and there's quite a few heavy-hitting examples to draw from when it comes to threat discovery and prevention. Anyone who wants can browse that page for themselves. I'll link it down below. The company was founded by three men, Daniel Sirota, Michael Van Stein, and Amos Pellet. These three men are the original architects of the company, but they also co-founded a separate company called Arpeely directly before Guardio. As part of my process, I examined the Glassdoor employee reviews for both Arpeely and Guardio. I looked at the hiring process, the websites, any outstanding litigation, etc., the terms of service, and basically anything else I could find. I treated them as if they were a bad thing and looked into them. And I can say this now, happily, having done that, everything checked out. These two companies have positive employee sentiment, demonstrate actual effort to find expert workers, don't have problems with contracts in the past that I could find. And while I don't know as much about Arpeely as I do about Guardio, the consistency of back-to-back -back businesses without major scandal or controversy is the foundation of a reputable pattern. Good news on that. Here's the cold reality of a growing online world. The frequency of bad actors approaching you or your loved ones, even when you don't realize it, is rising. And with that in mind, here's the value prop. Guardio, in terms of the omnipresent triangle between security, convenience, and privacy, sits over on the side between security and convenience, with measures taken to preserve privacy. The extension offers a roughly 17% increased flag rate on malicious websites or phishing attempts, etc. when compared to just Chrome by itself, which is rather large, and as a result, you'll pay a monthly subscription to enhance your browser protection on up to five separate devices, which is a trade-off that only you can decide to make. Me personally, I do not use the email or SMS scanning features. I highly prefer not to and never will. Personal decision on that. I do use the browser extension, and I think it's excellent for its purpose, but that is the full extent of my opt-in preferences with Guardio. At the end of the day, I am affiliated with Guardio in the sense that I get paid when users click my link and install the service, but I'm far more interested in thoroughly testing my own sponsors and evaluating them for what they are. In my opinion, yes, I'm biased, I get paid, like I said, you can cry about a conflict of interest if you want to, but in my opinion, if you have come to trust my opinion, Guardio is a worthwhile service for those looking to protect their basic browsing experience at a 17% higher rate compared to standard Chrome. And a lot of people, if you're just using standard naked Chrome, then yes, Guardio is a good idea for you. Or, and especially in relation to, those looking to protect children, who oftentimes have horrible browsing habits, and elderly family members with a first line of defense. Elderly family often not having the knowledge to differentiate between what is a scam and what's not. Guardio can help with that as well. It is both relatively secure and convenient. That's it. This may seem out of character for the channel, but like I said, I've done something similar once before when it came to Masterworks, and when I attach my name to a product or a business now, my goal is to be thorough. At the very least, I can devote the same amount of time and effort and energy to researching them as I would to any other project. I want to understand the entire scope of the business, that is to say. I've not always been perfect with that in the past, and certainly every company has positive or negative aspects, but showcasing the complete picture so that prospective users can make their own informed decision is never a bad thing. Link down below to check out the service if you want to. 
other links as well, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.